Hello and welcome back to our online multiplayer series. In the previous episode, I showed you how to set up a health bar and score on the screen so you can see each player's uh, information. Uh, in this one though, we're going to go through and show you how to showcase their each client's health bar above their head. So when you deal damage to them, you know how much damage you've done to them. So you can see their health bar on your screen as well as uh, they can see yours on theirs. So this will be pretty simple in design. We're just going to go make a new widget blueprint. And I'm going to call mine player unit frame minor. Open this up. And as it's quite simple, we're just going to get rid of the canvas panel. And in its place, we're going to put in a size box. And this size box is going to have a width override of 100 units. I'm then going to put in a progress bar inside of that. And you can see what this looks like if I change it to desired. It's going to look just like that. Very, very simple. I'm going to rename my progress bar here to uh, player health bar. And hit compile and save. And that's all we have to do. You can also style it as however you like with the various styling options and colors. But that's totally down to you. I'm going to leave mine as default blue. I'm going to close that and then go to my player character, third person character. Now I'm going to go to the viewport and we're going to add a widget component to this. So type in widget and you want to add this widget component. And we'll call this one player unit frame and in on the right hand side on the details we're going to change the user interface section uh, we're going to change the widget class first of all to our player unit frame minor and we'll tick draw at desired size and that means it will use the size that we uh, specified inside the widget itself so as you can see it you just want to drag it up above the player's head so you can see where that is now at the moment this is uh, being projected in world space, we want to change it to screen space. So go to the right hand side where we see space and change it to screen. Hit compile and save. Once we've done that, you want to head over to the event graph. Now on the event graph, we're going to create a new begin play event. So right click event begin play. And on begin play, we were going to get this player unit frame and get the user widget object and they'll get the widget that's inside of that component and then from there we're going to cast to our player unit frame minor we're going to take this and we're going to store this as our variable and we call it unit frame and leave it like so hit compile and save I then want to go over to where I'm updating my damage. So last time we did this damage uh, call here and we've done the call update after you do the health. Now the reason why we're doing that to remind you is that event point damage is an event that happens only on the server indicated by the server icon. Meaning that all the clients do not know how much damage they're receiving. This is how you keep it fair. So the server decides who taken what damage and then what we do is we tell all the clients to update themselves with their call update HUD here. So with that in mind, we're going to go over to our call update HUD and we're going to to also update our unit frame. So we're going to go and drag in our unit frame, choose get, and then from there we're going to get bar, and you can see get player health bar. And we're going to do set percent. And the percent is going to be our health value. So now if I push play, you can see now health bars above each other's heads. And if I shoot one, you can see it update. And you can see it's updated in all three client fields. I don't know if it's that clear for you, but it's all updating across. I click on this one here. That's also updating. Notice that these bars have changed to reflect that. Shoot the server, and you can see there one change. Reflect that. And there you go. So what I want to do is make it so that the player doesn't have one above their own head because I don't need two. They've got one on the screen already. So we make them hide the one they have above their head. Now currently, as of time of filming this, in version 426.1, uh, 
Uh, the own and no see option for widget components doesn't work if they're set to screen mode. So this is set to screen mode. Normally we would put on uh, owner no see, but this does nothing. I can show you. If I push play now, it does nothing. It's still there. So there's a bug currently in Unreal. Doesn't look like it's going to get fixed anytime soon, but there is a workaround. So the workaround is on our begin play. We're going to get controller just a normal get controller and also get player controller and see if these two equal each other now what this is actually doing is if you take it just from the perspective of the server the get controller is going to get the controller of each of these pawns in the level but only one of them is being controlled by the player controller so therefore, if we get controller and get player controllers the same, that means we are currently controlling the owner. That means I can use this here to set the visibility of my unit frame. So if I put that into a branch, plug that in, I can set my player unit frame visibility to false. Hit compile and save. And now we should see the bar is not above the player that you're controlling in each of these windows, but only showing on your opponents, which is what you want, obviously. So the last thing I want to do is take to make sure it updates the uh, bars at the start of the game. And that's very simple. Again, we're going to go to begin play. And we're going to call this call update uh, execution here. So we just put it on the end if we want. Not on the end, actually. Let's put it uh, before the branch. So do call update and that is it. So now everyone's bars are showing and I can shoot them and deplete their health bars. Okay. And the player over here can do it too and take down the server. And there you go. Thank you very much for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to go through the process of actually killing other players on your field. So when they run out of health, what did happen next? We want them to die and then respawn inside the same map. So that's what we're going to cover in the next episode in our online multiplayer series. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to watch that next part, plus any of the other of my videos, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey to catch them months before anyone else. Thank you to all of my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. It really is amazing and I can't thank you enough. Now if you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and don't forget the little notification bell. Just make sure you don't miss out on any of the content being released every day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.